Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Sniper Elite 4 where today we'll be looking at the best bolt action rifles in the game. The bolt actions in this game essentially fall into one of two categories. Either it has a 16x zoom or it doesn't. The low zoom rifles are all pretty much statistically identical so for those my advice is to go with whatever one you think looks the best which will obviously be the Enfield. However, the 16x zoom rifles do have some cool differences, and contrary to popular belief, the answer isn't always Mosin Nagant. This, like my semi-autos video, which I will put up in the top right now, will be a ranking, although do bear in mind that whilst I am ranking these rifles on their ability to perform at range, different rifles are good at different things. So, without further ado, let's get into this. If you don't know what a good rifle looks like, you'll be very familiar with the Manlicher, our 6th place entry. To be clear, despite what I said 18 words ago, the Manlicher is not a bad rifle, it just doesn't fill any particular role when compared to the other long range rifles. Yes, it has a straight pull, but the Ross has one of those too. It doesn't have the highest capacity, or the best muzzle velocity, or the highest damage. Simply put, the Manlicher is unremarkable. If it had the feature from real life where the stripper clip ejects out of the gun after the last round is expended, it would at least have been cool. But as far as I can tell, it doesn't have that either. In fifth place, as the obligatory wild card, we have the ZH-29. The ZH-29 holds the claim to fame as being the only semi-automatic with a 16x zoom, which, as you can probably tell, means it isn't directly comparable to the rest of our rifles in this list. At range, it is obviously worse than the other rifles in this list, but its rapid fire and decent damage definitely say something, and the fact its magazine is bigger than Greece's national debt probably helps too. All in all, the ZH-29 is a very, very competent and deadly rifle. But I said I'd rank these rifles on their ability to perform at ridiculous range, and whilst the ZH-29 can, it does struggle against the more sophisticated bolt actions. In fourth place we have the Ross Mark III. Whilst the whole idea of the Canadians manufacturing something that hurts other human beings is very strange to me, and also to everyone else, when they do it, they do it well. Whilst the Ross does have a scope that appears to be stolen from Fallout 4's cutting room floor, it is a very good weapon nonetheless. The straight pull bolt allows a rapid cyclic action whilst maintaining good velocity and damage, which helps out no end when dealing with multiple targets. The Ross is the first weapon on this list that I would say is genuinely viable, although there is, of course, the argument to be made for the ZH-29. In third place, we have the Mauser Rifle, which is a weapon that everyone seems to forget about, which is quite a shame, seeing as the rifle is actually quite good. Where the Mosin Nagant and the Kokano are fairly comparable, and the Ross, as good as it is, is substantially worse than these two, the Mauser acts as a nice little stepping stone in between those who have and those who have not. The Mauser is pretty much like the Blue Tones, absolutely excellent but mostly forgotten of in favour of others. The Mauser has good velocity, good damage, good range, uh, decent magazine capacity and fire rate, and no downsides, which is quite rare. If you haven't used the Mauser for a while, or at all for that matter, have a go with it the next time you're playing, because you might just like it. In second place we have the Kakano, and in first place we have the Mosin, and I'm going to go through both of these guns at the same time, as they are both fairly comparable, and the dynamic between them is that the Kakano is slightly easier to use, and slightly more versatile, but also slightly worse at range. The Kakano has superior recoil control, a faster reload and a greater capacity, but the Mosin Nagant has greater muzzle velocity. This isn't to say that the Kakano is weak of course, the rifle still packs a serious punch, 
more than enough to dispose of anyone unfortunate enough to find themselves on the receiving end of this monster, but the Kokano does lose out slightly, and as I'm giving critical reviews on both of these guns, I feel obliged to point that out. It was also worth saying that the Mosin Nagant is the choice for authentic difficulties. It is all you ever see anyone using, and for good reason, as the Mosin's bullet drop is non-existent. So, in short, I feel that for most situations, the Kokano probably works better than the Russian competition, but at range, which is what these rifles were built for, you just can't beat the Nagand. Thank you everyone for watching the video. Remember to like, subscribe and comment. It costs you nothing and it's a great way to help out the channel. Stay safe and goodbye.